Hey everybody, this is Theo Hartzell. I want to make a real quick video to answer the question in the Old Testament on Mount Carmel, did Elijah kill 450 prophets or did he kill 850 prophets? If you'll remember the story, you'll realize that there was 450 prophets of Baal and there were 400 prophets of Ashtoreth, which were Jezebel's prophets. So in the end of the story, how many did he kill? 450 or 850? For those of you who just want to get information as quick as possible, like I do sometimes, the the simple and quick answer is Elijah only killed 450 prophets. They were the prophets of Baal. He did not kill the 400 prophets of Ashtoreth or Jezebel because they never even showed up. Stick with me in this video and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, if you want to learn a little bit about Baal and Ashtoreth and Ahab and Jezebel and what was going on and where Jezebel came from, if you want to look at the scriptural account in the Bible to see exactly why I'm saying this, that it was only the prophets of Baal, and we're even going to look at some biblical commentaries to prove this out, then stick with me because I want to help you have an understanding of exactly what I'm talking about, and I want to clear up the confusion of how many prophets did Elijah kill. And the reason that I want to do this is because I want to absolutely clear up the confusion because sometimes I hear people preaching and they say that they killed 850 or they killed 400 or 450. And I just want to clear up all this confusion and just get it over with and help people understand Elijah killed 450 prophets. Now, let me give you a brief history about this goddess Ashtoreth because she's been known for thousands of years and worshiped and she's actually a demonic entity, but she's been worshiped for thousands of years by many ancient people. And I don't want to go into her history too much and where all she came from and who all she was worshiped by, but the thing that she was worshipped for is she was worshipped for fertility, sensuality, lust, and then on the other hand, she was also worshipped as a goddess of war. And if you study her out for any length of time, you'll also understand that she was worshipped as the moon god because Baal was the supreme male deity and he was worshipped as the sun god. And we see that through the Grecian empires, the Roman empires, and every empire worshipping the sun. And so what's amazing to me is out of this is these deities are being worshipped by many different peoples of many different nations under many different names, and yet it is the same demonic principalities and powers, the female, moon, fertility, sensual, sexual, lustful goddess. And then on the other hand, you have the Baal god, which was the sun or the male, the supreme being, and these are always working hand in hand together. And the reason I say that out and bring that out is because you see these two gods played out and manifested in the life of Ahab and Jezebel. Ahab is over here worshiping Baal, who is the supreme male god. God, and he is the sun god. And then on the other hand, you have Jezebel over here representing the female, sensual, lustful, sexual, fertility goddess of fertility and war. And the reason that that's important is because as you study out the history of all of these nations, including the children of Israel, they would build these groves of trees and they would build this grove that they would worship these idol gods in. And in the middle of that grove, they would put an idol, which was called an Asherah or an Asherah pole, which was a wooden pole often. And it was was an image of the goddess of fertility, this goddess Ashtoreth, but it was called an Asherah pole. They had ritual prostitution where the women would dance very seductively and very lustfully around the Asherah pole, the wooden pole that was in the middle of the groves while everyone was playing the music, while they were watching the women, while they were dancing seductively. And the reason that I'm saying that is because I want you to understand that Jezebel, according to Jewish history, was one of the most beautiful and most seductive and most most lustful women that have ever lived. In fact, according to many of the Jewish reports I've read about Jezebel, insinuate and say that she was so lustful and so sensual that the people around her could not even resist her and therefore she had to be surrounded by eunuchs who had no physical appeal for human flesh. And one reason that I call this out and I think it's so powerful is because you will see in the life of Jezebel that she tried to use lust and sensuality and the sexuality of her own body and the lustful spirit that was associated with her her to control people. And she would control her husband Ahab through that. And if she could not control people through lust and sensuality and the gravitation of the base lust of the flesh, then she would flip the switch into that Jezebel spirit and move over into the spirit of war. And she would have people like Naboth killed to get his vineyard. And one reason that you see that she was killing the prophets of God is because the ones that she could not control through sensuality and lust and sensuality and the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, she flipped the switch and moved over into war and she killed the 
the prophets of God. And Jezebel was a Phoenician of the Phoenician Empire. She lived over on the coast against the sea, and they were a very seafaring people, and they were very powerful in their navy. And you will see the Bible many times talk about Tyre and Sidon, and Jezebel was from Sidon. Now, one reason I want to highlight that and bring that out is because as this played out in the life of Solomon, before we get to Jezebel and Ahab, when you look at Solomon's life, God had forbidden these kings to take foreign wives, but Solomon disobeyed that. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 11, but King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, you shall not go into them, neither shall they come into you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love, or can I say it like this, in lust. Verse 3, and he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart just like God said would happen. Verse 4, and it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father. Verse 5, for Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, or Sidon, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. The reason I said that is because when you look at the life of Solomon, you will see that he had 700 wives, 300 concubines. He was constantly obsessed with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life associated with women. And what did he end up doing? He ended up worshiping worshiping this goddess Ashtara in the sensuality and the lustfulness of his flesh. The whole reason that I highlighted that and wanted to bring that out is because when we're talking about the 450 prophets of Baal, we're talking about those who worshiped Baal, the supreme sun god, the male god that Ahab was worshiping and celebrating. And when we flip over and we're talking about the 400 prophets of Jezebel that ate at her table, that was the ones that were state funded and handpicked by Jezebel herself, worshiping and honoring this goddess of sex sexuality, fertility, lustfulness, and sensuality from Phoenicia. So now that I've laid that foundation, let me get into the scriptural text, and we'll read through that. And in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 19, it says, Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal. Notice that right there. Look at that. Prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. And this is where so many people get confused because they see, well, there was 450 of Baal and 400 of Ashtra. And so the challenge was issued to 450 and 400, that's 850. And therefore, there must have been 850 that were gathered to Mount Carmel. However, that is not the case because as we go through this over and over and over, you will see that there was only 450 prophets of Baal that were in the encounter with Elijah. The one that Elijah was making fun of and mocking and ridiculing was 450 prophets of Baal. The scripture passage never talks about the 400 prophets of Ashtra other than the initial challenge. And the reason this is so so important is because Jezebel never let her 400 prophets of Ashtara go to the encounter on Mount Carmel. In 1 Kings 18 and 20, it says, So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. It does not say whether it was the prophets of Baal. It doesn't say whether it was the prophets of Ashtara. It just says that he gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. According to the John Gill commentary, it says this, The 450 prophets of Baal, but not the 400 prophets of the groves for of them we have no account afterward, only of the former. It may be that they were not at the command of Ahab, only of Jezebel, at whose table they ate, who would not suffer them or allow them to go. Listen to the Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown commentary speaking about these prophets of Ashtra. It says, they were priests of Astarte, the Zidonian goddess, that's also one of her names, the prophets of the groves. From the sequel, it appears that the former only came, speaking about the prophets of Baal. The latter, the prophets of Ashtra, anticipating some evil, evaded the king's command. Eliot's commentary for English readers says, the prophets of the grove, or of Asherah, these being probably the devotees of the female deity Astarte, seem to have been especially favored by the queen. It is, however, to be noted, in spite of Elijah's challenge, they do not appear at all at the subsequent scene. In other words, there was 400 prophets of Asherah, also called Astarte, and even though Elijah challenged them to come and command 
commanded them to come to prove whether they were a real God or not, they did not go. Jezebel did not let them go. So let's just go on in the scripture context and see who Elijah was talking to, who was there, and who he was dialoguing to, and who he was having this contest with. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him, and if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Notice what he said right here. The challenge is directed towards the god Baal because the prophets of Ashtoreth never showed up. He didn't say, if Baal and Ashtoreth be God, then worship them. He said, if Baal be God, then worship him. The reason is, is because Ahab allowed all of his 450 prophets to come, but Jezebel, knowing that they were false prophets, did not allow her Ashtoreth prophets to come and even get in the encounter at all. Verse 22, then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 25, And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Notice again, he did not address the prophets of Ashtoreth because they are not there to talk to or address or mock or make fun of or bring any bulls to any altars. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourself and dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. Verse 26, And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. And there was no voice nor anyone that answered, and they leaped upon the altar which was made. And at the end of the encounter, listen to what happened in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 40. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal. Notice again, the prophets of Baal. Not the prophets of Ashtoreth, because the prophets of Ashtoreth are not even there. Take the prophets of Baal. Let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. If you want to know how many prophets Elijah killed on that day, he killed 450 prophets prophets of Baal. He did not touch the prophets of Ashtoreth because Jezebel never even let them go. They never even showed up. They were not on the mountaintop. They were not at the encounter. Elijah was not making fun of them. He was not talking to them. They did not build an altar because they were not even there. And I think this is interesting at the end of Ahab's story, but at the end of Ahab's story, he still has 400 prophets, not 450, but he still has 400 prophets at the end of his story as he's about to die in his last battle. And listen to what it says in 1 Kings chapter 22 verse 6, Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go up against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. I don't know about you, but I can see the connection here that the reason Ahab, at the end of his life, as he's about to fight his last battle, is sitting there with 400 prophets is because the only 400 that were left were the prophets of Ashtoreth, who were Jezebel's prophets eating at her table. So the next time you hear somebody talking about how many prophets did Elijah kill, you'll be able to give them a good biblical answer. And the biblical answer is that Elijah killed 450 prophets of Baal. Elijah did not kill the 400 prophets of Ashtoreth who Jezebel had eating at her state-funded table, worshiping her goddess from Sidon. And they never even showed up into the encounter. And so they never got harmed or touched. And as you look at the end of Ahab's story, he is still calling on false prophets and false gods gods and false goddesses, and there's exactly 400 of them. And more than likely, the Bible doesn't bear it out, but more than likely, that's the 400 prophets of Ashtoreth from Jezebel's table. Amen. God bless you. I love you, and I'll see you in the next one. Until next time, I'm praying for you, and I'm asking you to pray for me. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.